press victory right here. Yes. All over that. Yes. Big Woo! smile for the camera, babe. <laughs> Oh my god, guys, we got all of our money back! How do you do this every right? single time? Is the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Hey, this man's some sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. Now, as you guys know, I like to do my research on things, and in my research, I found an interesting article that I thought it would be worth it bringing up with you guys. So, I know a lot of you guys on the channel are slot players, and there's nothing more exciting than getting the elusive slot machine hand -picked. Brilliant! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, is it gonna hit a hand -pick? Is, is it, it gonna it? Let's find out, let's find out. Alright, 1100! Oh my god! How's it finish? How's it gonna finish? Oh! What's that? What's that total? 2200! Yeah, baby! You guys know what it is. You hit that jackpot, the machine lights up, everything stops, and then your heart just starts racing. Until it plummets when you get up to the point where the slot machine attendant tells you, now we're going to need to do some paperwork. Why is that? Because you know, at that point, you definitely owe a little something to the tax man. Well, it looks like the AGA, along with a couple other groups, are looking to reduce that liability a little bit. Here's what's going on according to this report. Okay, so basically here's what the AGA's plan is here. They want to increase the threshold from having to fill out a W2G from your slot machine loans. As you know right now, if you hit a jackpot of $1,200 or above and get a win like that, it's going to count on your win sheet, and you're going to have to fill out a form so you can report that to the IRS and then the tax man come up. But currently, it looks like the AGA is trying to increase that threshold to $5,000, which makes sense on a lot of different levels. One is $1,200 isn't that much money anymore. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be upset if I won $1,200 on a slot machine, especially if I'm just goofing off and spinning while I'm waiting for drinks. But the more important thing there is the fact that this regulation was set back in 1977. Now, think about that for a minute. $1,200 was worth a lot more in 1977, Disco was still alive, and that was the very first Star Wars movie that we ever got back in 1977. A lot has changed since then. So, with that being said, I think there are a lot of benefits to this. Number one, it's obviously beneficial to the player. If you're goofing off and you don't want to have to deal with a whole bunch of paperwork, a whole bunch of slowdowns, and most importantly, people getting in your business over there, I think a threshold of $5,000 is pretty good. Even though $1,000 isn't a lot of money, it's definitely attractive to someone who wants to go ahead and snatch up a piece of that if they can. Second benefit, surprisingly, would be to the casinos. So, one, it does take a while to fill out that paperwork. It does take a while to fill out those forms. That machine is off the table while they're working on that, meaning that they actually have to shut down the machine during the hand pay. So, that means that players can't play, and the casino is losing money every second that that machine is not operating. Also, they have to have their attendance out, occasionally a host too, so that's going to take up a fair amount of staffing. And it's sometimes not worth the resources for something as low as $1,400. And surprisingly, apparently, it might be a little easier for the IRS. Now, don't get me wrong. It seems a little weird that they want to increase this so you don't have to report it on your taxes, because that would mean that there'd be fewer dollars coming into the Internal Revenue Service. But, if you consider it this way, they also have to process those W-2Gs. That paperwork that you send in, someone has to read, someone has to process, and someone has to deal with. That takes manpower, and manpower costs money. And an interesting thing too is, I think this might be a better thing for casinos on the whole. Largely because everybody benefits from this arrangement, mainly the IRS, the player, and the casino, more people are probably prone to coming back to Vegas, especially if they think that they can hit a jackpot of $4,800 or less. Now, it does make sense for a couple of reasons. One, again, $1,200 was set back in 1977. 
Back in those days, $1,200 was roughly a month's salary, so it would make sense that that be taxed. Actually, at that point, I think it was about $10,000, correct me if I'm wrong, comment section, was the average salary back in 1977. Here in 2020, between inflation and, you know, general cost of living increases, average salary has to be somewhere around $50,000. So $5,000 would be more accurate to a month's salary. And actually, the funny thing is, if you run it through the inflation calculator there, you're going to get $5,150 today would be equivalent to be roughly $1,200 in 1977. So it does make perfect sense. Now, the only bad thing I can really see about this is... Actually, I can't really see any downsides to this. I feel like everybody wins. Again, there's a little less going for the Internal Revenue Service, but, you know, it's the IRS. They nailed El Capone. They can take a loss every once in a while. It is what it is. I guess the only other thing I can think of is maybe some people might get carried away trying to get to that threshold and bite off a little bit more than they can chew. So we'll see what happens there. I'm sure there are lots of slot mathematicians out there trying to figure out how to work this to their advantage, myself included, and we'll just see how it goes. But what do you guys think, Spanish and Sharks? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. In 2021, would you like to see the IRS increase the threshold up to $5,000 for a hand pay instead of $1,200? And that's assuming you're an American citizen, of course. I'm sure for my Canadian and my UK viewers, you guys probably don't care much. Uh, I'm sure there's something that you guys have to do on the tail end to avoid the taxes, but I'm a little curious about that too. So, for any of my Canadian and UK viewers, does this affect you at all? And how is this going to affect your guys' back end processes to make sure you don't have to pay American taxes? on uh, money that you made in America as a foreign national, so a citizen of the UK, a citizen of Australia, a citizen of Germany, Japan, uh, Canada, Mexico, wherever. But yeah, I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on this in the comments down below. Alright there, Spanish and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Next time we come back, I think we're going to go ahead and get a little Vegas podcast action going. That's right, that's the hashtag Vegas video podcast going on at 6 o'clock Vegas time tomorrow on Sunday. So that'll be December 20th, 2020, and we will see you then. Until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, wishing you all strong hands, and of course, happy spinning, you guys. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Viva Las Vegas. Viva.